Hey guys, Curtis and Chelsea here. We're on our way to Thailand and we're gonna give you our tips on how to survive a long haul flight. Let's go. Tip number one, stay up late. Good morning guys. It was a 3 a.m. wake up call for Curtis and I. We are running on about two hours of sleep right now. And the reason why we did this and why you should stay up late the night before your flight is because you want to be as tired as possible so that we can get the most amount of sleep on the plane as possible. By the time you reach this point in the airport, most of the hard work is already done because we will be planning ahead. Tip number two is seat selection. There's great websites out there like Seat Guru that let you view the layout of the plane and give you warnings if any seats are particularly good or particularly bad. If there's a baggage bin overhead or if those seats don't have entertainment units. It's a great way to help you pick your seats so you know you're gonna be the most comfortable for the flight. Seat Guru also shows you pictures and reviews from people that have taken the same plane before, so we will put a link in the description below. First stop, Denver. Goal, stay awake. Denver, Colorado. This is a banging airport. There is a whole little food court section here. Good grub. So that was our first of three plane rides today. We went Calgary to Denver, two and a half hours, Denver to Tokyo, 12 hours, and then Tokyo to Bangkok, which I think is another seven hours. We just finished our first leg, so we are bright and chipper. I accomplished my goal. I did not sleep. Curtis, on the other hand, may have nodded off for a little bit. I am freaking exhausted. Sleeping on this 12 hour flight is going to be no problem at all. I have a little bit of a confession to make. Neck pillows, eye shades, are the stupidest things you could probably buy. Who wants to sit around looking like you just broke your neck, wearing this big huge thing around your neck? Most people wear them through the airport because where else are you gonna put them so you look like an idiot? And then a blindfold. Lots of guys wear blindfolds or eye shades so that they can get a nice dark atmosphere when they're trying to sleep. And you just look ridiculous. But totally worth it. In all seriousness, these neck pillows, the one that we got here, there's a little pump on it so you can inflate and deflate it so it saves you space around the plane. This eye shade here, we picked up at actually um, Bed Bath & Beyond and it comes with earplugs as well. So you can throw your earplugs in, eye shade, completely black everything else, so you can get a good sleep. Plug your ears so you don't hear anything. Money.
This is a device that you blow up to take all the wind out of you, so you pass out when you're on the plane. So what this does, again, it's inflatable, you blow it up, you put this on your lap on the tray table in front of you, on the tray table in front of you, or on your lap just like this. Put your arms in, and you can lean forward. There's also a spot, also a spot on the inside here, if you can see. Right through here, you can put your phone, so you can put your phone here, put your head down, and you get out your own little theater to yourself. This thing will save your back time and time again. So aside from the awesome accessories like Kurt just mentioned, two other things we like to keep in our travel bag are compression socks. Especially on a 12 hour flight like this, the last time when we got back from China, our feet were swollen for three days. So don't leave home without them. Not really accessory related, but I always like to keep a toothbrush and a change of clothes so that when you have a layover, you can freshen up and it'll make you feel relaxed for the next leg of your flight. In all seriousness, the neck pillow and eye mask are totally worth it and you don't even look that stupid. Just scored big time. We got on this plane. Before we got on, we were checking our itinerary that where you can change your seats and pick where you want to sit. And there is three seats. You're supposed to be in the window seat and have the window in the middle, and then there's supposed to be somebody beside us. So we were looking at this map and we saw that the middle row had nobody in it. So just by chance, we went and sat in it to see what happened. If somebody came and sat in those seats, we'd act like idiots, go back to our old seats. Nobody said anything. For a 12-hour flight, this is the biggest score ever. These seats were like $200 a piece to upgrade. Tip number I have lost count is checking what airports you're transferring from. Um, we had a nightmare situation where we had a transfer in China and the transfer alone took us five hours to complete um, and if we had just simply googled the airport before we had booked the tickets we could have seen that these problems were going to happen and we could have completely avoided them.